Hey everyone, it's Bellamy here from Midnight Suns and today I have for all of you my most requested video of all time. That's right, I am here with my ultimate Moira guide. So these are the top 10 tips I have for Moira players no matter what rank you are. And with these 10 tips, you can really maximize your performance on this amazingly powerful hero. And without further ado, here is the guide. Enjoy! The first tip I have for you is to pre-heal your teammates. So if you know your teammates are about to get damaged, you can spray your biotic grabs healing on them preemptively before they actually take any damage. Your biotic grabs healing actually applies a lingering healing effect for 3 seconds. So your teammates will instantly start getting healed if they receive any damage within 3 seconds after you spray them. So make sure you do this before your teammates engage in a fight, and you'll be able to keep them alive a lot more often. The second tip I have for you is to heal tap your teammates to conserve your healing resources. So if your teammates don't require heavy sustained burst healing, you can simply tap on your primary fire healing button on them and let the lingering effect do the job so that you can conserve your healing juice for when you really need it. And that means you will usually end up healing your teammates for between 75 to 100 HP over 3 seconds with just that single split second of primary fire healing depending on how long you hold the button down. The third tip I have for you is to prioritize using your heal ops as much as possible. While I know it might be tempting to throw your damage op into the enemy team during every team fight, it is usually more efficient to throw a heal orb for your team instead. A damage orb does 50 damage per second up to 200 damage, while a healing orb recovers 65 damage per second up to 300 damage. And this is why it is usually much more efficient to use your healing orbs as much as possible and you'll gain your out charge faster and keep your team alive a lot more this way as well. Now if your teammates don't require the healing, then go right ahead and use your damage orbs. But otherwise, remember to prioritize using your heal ops as much as possible. And that brings me to the fourth tip, which is to make sure to use your damage op to zone your enemies. So you can really apply pressure on areas that you know the enemies are going to be walking into, whether it's a choke or the control point or the payload. Basically, you want to throw your damage op in zones that you know your enemies are trying to control. So if you see them setting up on the high ground, you can throw your damage up there to pressure them and possibly get a pick as well. If your enemies are low on health and they are trying to escape, you can also use your damage up to zone off their escape routes. And this is a perfect way to finish off enemies who might be out of your line of sight. As much as you can, do also try to aim your damage ops a bit higher than eye level so that it is not so easy for your enemies to deflect or absorb them. My fifth tip for you is to make sure that you utilize the environment to ricochet your biotic orbs. As you start climbing competitive ranks, you'll start meeting better and better players who have amazing hit scan accuracy. And you could poke your head out in the open for a split second and get headshotted by a Widowmaker out of nowhere. And that is why it is incredibly important as a Moira player that you know how to stay out of the enemy's line of sight and ricochet your biotic orbs from a safe spot. This way, you can still use your damage ops to damage the enemies without leaving yourself exposed in the open. And you can also ricochet your healing ops to heal your teammates who are in unsafe positions without having to expose yourself. Remember, staying alive is one of the most important things you need to do as a support player. So bounce your biotic ops off the walls and let them do their job. Always stay behind cover when you need to, and never sacrifice your life by running out into the open when it's dangerous to do so. The sixth tip I have for you is to take advantage of the unblockable nature of your Biotic Grab's alternate fire. Your Biotic Grab's alternate fire pierces through any defensive skill that isn't a shield barrier. So things like Genji's Deflect, Sigma's Kinetic Grabs, Diva's Defense Matrix, Orisa's Javelin Spin, you can pierce right through all of that. 
Now, your biotic grab's alternate fire can still have its damage reduced by damage mitigation skills like Orisa's Fortify or Doomfist's Power Block. But nothing can outright block your biotic grabs except for a shield barrier like Reinhardt or Sigma's shield. So the next time you see your enemies trying to escape using a defensive skill that isn't a shield barrier, just remember that they can't block your biotic grabs alternate fire. So go right ahead and finish them off. The seventh tip I have for you is to use your fate as a movement tool effectively for both engaging and disengaging from fights. Now when it comes to using your fate to engage or disengage, I would say that you should avoid using your fate to engage enemies unless you are confident that it won't result in your own death. So if you know that it is safe for you to be aggressive and you won't be punished for fading towards the enemy, then you can definitely use your fate to target and chase down enemies and finish them off. But otherwise, saving your fate to disengage from fights is usually a much more effective use of the ability. If you are low on health and getting chased down by enemies, you can use your fate to escape by getting far away enough out of their line of sight or by going in directions that they don't expect. Do also note that if you time your fate well, you can even negate crowd control effects like the hinder from Cassidy's magnetic grenade or even the stun knockdown from Sigma's accretion rock throw. Do also note that you can fade while you're using your coalescence out, so make sure to use it to dodge and counter enemy outs like Reinhardt's Earth Shatter or Sombra's EMP. You can also use your fate in the middle of a fight to simply reposition yourself to a more advantageous spot so that you can continue applying pressure on your enemies or heal your teammates from a safer position. Your fate is also incredibly useful for repositioning yourself around cover to win most 1v1 fights in the game, even against enemy tanks. Do also note that if you jump during your fate, you will get a bonus vertical and horizontal movement boost which is incredibly useful if you need to contest the point or get around cover quickly. And the 8th tip I have for you is to optimize your coalescence ultimate efficiency. So you ideally want to be in the backline behind your frontlining teammates when you activate your coalescence so that you can heal them while also damaging your enemies at the same time. Your coalescence ultimate pierces through all players and shield barriers. So you want to move around and line up as many of your teammates and the enemies in your line of fire as you can. Now, as much as possible, you want to focus on using it to heal your teammates and not just use it to do damage to the enemies. Because the beam heals 140 HP per second while only doing 70 damage per second. So it is much more efficient and optimal to use it to keep your teammates alive instead of only damaging your enemies with it. Now, if a bunch of your teammates are already dead and you are trying to use your coalescence to win a team fight on point, then you can go right ahead and be aggressive with it. But otherwise, try to prioritize healing your teammates with it first before using it to destroy your enemies. The ninth tip I have for you is to make sure to dive the enemy backline when you can. So this is not something you can do in every single game, and it greatly depends on the enemy's team composition. If they are playing heroes like Cassidy or Torbjorn that can punish you for trying to attack their backline, or if they have strong support players using heroes like Baptist or Kiriko who can headshot and kill you in a couple of seconds when you try to dive on them in the backline, then don't dive their backline and instead play more defensively with the rest of your team. But if they are playing heroes that are vulnerable to your backline assault, then go right ahead and dive their backline and assassinate their supports or DPS if you can. But make sure that you save your fate to escape back to your team if things go bad. And the 10th and final tip I have for you is to make sure that you are prioritizing the right targets to damage and focusing on getting the right picks to win team fights. So, it might be very tempting to just hold down your biotech grabs alternate fire on the enemy tank the whole time because they are a gigantic target and it is very easy to do that. But that's not always the best thing to do. Instead, you should focus on first taking out their supports and DPSs. In terms of target priority, 
I would say that it is usually best to kill the supports first, then kill the DPSs, and then finally the tank. Now sometimes you might end up killing a DPS first if one of them is out of position, but otherwise generally it is better to go for the supports first. Now this is not to say that you shouldn't attack the enemy tank at all. If their tank is far in front and the rest of their team is hiding far away in their backline, like if they are playing a Hanzo Widowmaker Iliari full sniper composition, then it might be better to just have your entire team focus fire and burn down their frontlining tank first, before jumping on the rest of their team in the backline. But otherwise, if you can, in most usual situations, you should try to kill their supports first so that their team won't have enough heals, and then they will crumble and fall over like dominoes soon enough. And well, those are the top 10 tips I have for all of you to play Moira in Overwatch 2. Moira is an incredibly strong support hero that performs amazingly well at all levels of the game, from bronze all the way up to champion and top 500. So if you are a support player, then she is a hero that you most probably want to get good at. And so I hope that this guide has been helpful to you, and I think you are now ready to start climbing the competitive ladder with everybody's favourite mad scientist. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this guide, and as always, stay gold. I will see you all around.